Now we go to the next process, the concentration process. Concentration is a process that we apply heat to evaporate water so we can remove part of water. When we remove part of water, then actually we reduce water activity. When we reduce water activity, then we enhance the keeping quality of the cell life. We can increase the cell life. We also, of course, when removing water, we reduce the volume, reduce the mass. Then we can reduce the cost for storage and for transportation from this to another country and so on. Concentration is applied, for example, in in milk, in skim milk, in whey, and other milk products. What that means we can apply to do concentration. We can do concentration by evaporation. Evaporation is actually we use heat to evaporate water. The water from liquid will be converted into vapor and be removed away. And this is by heat process. And the concentration can be also obtained by reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis filtration. So we use a membrane. Basically, we only allow water to pass through the membrane and all remaining components are retained. So we can remove by filtration like this so we have concentrated product at the other side. When we use revert osmosis, it's a kind of membrane filtration thickness. Then normally, we don't have to use high temperature. We don't use high temperature, then you maintain better the sensorial quality, the nutritional quality, compared to the evaporation methods. This one is the conventional methods. Okay, this is the old methods, conventional one. There is another advanced method which can be applied for concentration is the freezing. It's a special instrument that you freeze only the water. The water becomes ice crystal and then be separated away and then the remaining dry matter content will be higher. What are the effects of concentration? So when we do concentration, we reduce water activity. For example, here milk has water activity of almost 1. But evaporated milk, you reduce a little bit. The other product, here you may condense milk with added sugar. This is called sweetened condensed milk. You already remove part of water and now you add also a certain amount of sugar. So the water activity is quite low. And then skim milk powder, then it's actually not concentration anymore. It's a drying is applied already. You apply drying. You only have a small amount of water remaining in the product. So you have even much lower water activity. And this one is in the cheese. So the first effect is what? It's the reduction in water activity. The second effect is in the product become the product now have higher hygroscopic city means that they have a higher capacity to absorb vapor from the air they absorb more vapor from the air especially for example the skim milk powder the milk powder here if you open the bag then they may absorb the vapor from the air very fast the third effect is on the ph when we do concentration we will lower the ph for example, about 0.3 to 0.5 unit will be lower when we increase the solid content to two or three times, respectively, by concentration. When we do concentration, we also call changes in the conformation of proteins because when we do that, we have uh, the changes in ionic strength, in the pH value, in the uh, salt equilibrium and so on because this one parameter will then influence to the conformation of proteins 
All their physical chemical property changes include what? The osmotic pressure. Now you remove water, you increase the dissolved solid content, so then you increase the osmotic pressure. You reduce the freezing point. The freezing point is going down, means that the freezing point depression now then going up. Freezing point depression means how low the freezing point of our ingredient compared to the freezing point of pure water. So you increase the dissolved solid content, you increase the freezing point depression. And then the boiling point is an increase because you have more solid content, the water becomes more difficult to boil. Electrical conductivity will increase because you have higher ion concentrations. The density becomes higher, refractive index becomes higher. As we refract the light more. What we reduce, the heat conducti conductivity then decreases. As the heat transfer becomes slower because the diffusion molecules or components become lower because of higher viscosity. Rheological properties are affected. The viscosity then increase and the liquid become more non-Newtonian. Diffusion coefficient decreased, we already said. Like the molecules become less mobile. It's more difficult for them to migrate, to move, to diffuse. And then because of the change in water activity, we will, this will result in many other changes. If we look at this figure, this assays illustrate the water activity. When we do concentration or drying, then we lower the water activity. When we lower the water activity, then bacteria is inhibited first, and then the yeast and then the mold will also inhibit it later on. We already discussed this in chapter 5, right? We know that mold is the most tolerant to low water activity and then yeast and then bacteria. So if the product is a little bit dry, then we normally do not need to worry about bacteria, but we still have to worry about yeast and mold. And now if we look at this one, then we see that when water activity is below 0.6, then we can say that no microbial growth occur. Okay? The water activity becomes low enough to inhibit all yeast, mold, and bacteria. So when we go down further, there are changes on non-enzymatic browning reaction on the activities of enzyme and then effects on the oxidation and so on. I think I discussed this already somewhere. So maybe you just look at the Vietnamese version. I think I explained this more there. Because when we do concentration, so we go somewhere here, but we go further to drying, uh, to roasting, and so on. So if you go down here, so try to understand why there are changes like this. As we already said, there are several techniques that we can apply to do new concentration. And the conventional one is to use evaporation. We use heat to boil the milk. And then water will be evaporated to remove. What we need to know is that if we do boiling at atmospheric pressure, then the temperature should be higher than 100 degrees C. Right? If you remember at one atmosphere, as atmospheric pressure, water boils at 100 degrees C. Milk boils at a little bit higher than 100 degrees C because milk contains dissolved components as well. So in order to do evaporation at atmospheric pressure, you need to heat milk to above 100 degrees C. And this is not good in terms of sensorial quality and in terms of nutritional quality of the product because at high temperature for a long time, the product will be influenced negatively. 
And that is the reason why evaporation is always done under reduced pressure, under low pressure or under vacuum. Lower pressure compared to atmosphere, so we lower the boiling point. For example, we do, we do low pressure so that the water can be remove at 70 degrees C for example from 45 to 70 degrees C which is lower the pressure we can lower the boiling point and doing that then we can prevent the damage due to high heating so what do you need to remember here again evaporation in food industry especially now in dairy industry then it's carried out under reduce pressure not at normal pressure so if you for example 10 years ago if you look at milk candy in vietnam then the product has a brown color quite brown quite dark color but nowadays if you look at milk candy on the market the product is still quite white and the flavor is quite good but in the past, the product looks so brown or dark color and the flavor is kind of strong caramelization flavor. Uh, the flavor from caramelization of sugar a lot. Because in the past, they cook, they remove water from meal to make candy at atmospheric pressure. But nowadays, they have instrument they do at low temperature, so the flavor the color of milk is maintained much better now. This is some example of evaporation for concentration of milk. And they use this type of evaporator. Evaporator is an instrument to do evaporation. And they use this type, falling film type. Falling film in the milk will run from the top to the bottom. They run down because of the gravity. And when they run down like this, they form a thin surface surrounding the diff. And outside the diff is the heating medium. We transfer the heat to milk and then it will evaporate somewhere here. And then the vapor, the vapor of the first effect, this is you call the effect, you have two effects, effect one, effect two. Đây là một cái thiết bị cô đặt hai hiệu ứng yeah. you just review again the cost food engineering uh, we already discussed this evaporator and we use the falling film type because this is suitable for liquid product of high sensitivity to temperature for the product which can be destroyed or impacted a lot with high temperatures and the UD sky falling film type